kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes. We use these storage measurements just about every gosh darn dilly of a day. And most of us feel like we know exactly what they mean, but do we really? Do you really know what a byte means? Do you know what it's always meant? Do you know? Are you, are you truly sure about the origin of the word byte? I mean, who came up with the word byte anyway? Let's take a moment to look over the history of the term, if for no other reason than to feel smarter than most other nerds. Because don't you want to be at a party and have a whole bunch of factoids that most people don't know about the origin of the word bite and what it really means to just whip out and just be the life of the party? Yeah, yeah, you know you do. So let's start with this. What is a bite? If you ask good old Mr. Google <clears throat> what a bite is, <laughs> you'll find a very specific definition. A bite is eight bits. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. In fact, I would agree with that. Mm, and Mr. Google wouldn't lie now, Mr. Would Mr. Google. It really is eight bits, right? Eight bits equals a byte. Okay, okay, let's let's take that at face value for a moment. So what is a bit? Well, now that part is pretty simple. A bit is the smallest unit of information for a digital computer. A bit can have two possible values, a zero or a one. It's a Boolean, it's a binary. Now, how many people believe that bit uh, is short for, a, for byte, B-I-T-E? You find this in many computer history books. This little tidbit has been repeated so often that many believe it. However, like many such oft-repeated anecdotes in computing, it is utter hogwash. In fact, BIT is an acronym for binary information digit. You squash that little phrase together and you get an, you get an acronym to be BIT, B-I-T, binary information uh, digit. Now, uh, a fun little factoid about the origin of the BIT. The first usage of the word BIT when talking about a type of data in reference to computing was, on, was by Vannevar Bush. He published an article entitled Instrumental Analysis in October of 1936 in, in an issue of the American Mathematical Society. And in it, he used the phrase bits of information when talking about punch cards. However... The bit, B-I-T, just as a word, was a commonly used word in Middle English that referred to a mouthful or a morsel of food. This is the origin of why many people believe bit is short for bite, even though it isn't. As such, Vannevar Bush may not have actually been thinking about a bit as a binary digit. Instead, he may have simply thought, this is a morsel of data, also worth noting. Bush never actually defines in that article what a bit actually is, making it likely that he was simply using the word bit in the Middle english -y way and wasn't actually coining this term at all. The first distinctly verifiable usage of the word bit in this way, referring to computers, is by John Tukey from a mathematical theory of communication, um, is by, sorry, is by John Tukey. From this article entitled A Mathematical Theory of Communication written by C.E. Shannon in 1949, quote, the choice of a logarithmic base corresponds to the choice of a unit for measuring information. If the base two is used, is, is used the resulting units may be called binary digits or more briefly, bits, a word suggested by J.W. John Tukey. A device with two stable positions, such as a relay or a flip-flop circuit, can store one bit of information. So there you have it. More information about the origin of the term bit than you ever possibly wanted to know. It came from John Tukey, and it means binary information digit. All right, you're welcome. Great. So let's, let's move on from that. In short, a bit is a zero or a one, and a byte is a group of eight bits. That's pretty easy and straightforward, right? No, 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 no. Hold on, back up a little bit. While the byte being eight bits is commonly accepted today, that was not always the case, not by a long shot. In fact, there are two competing stories for who created the term byte, and neither of them, not one of them, was referring to a set of eight bits. That's serious. So no matter who you think created the term byte, it does not actually mean eight bits, neither of them. 
So let's look at both of these stories here. The first is Werner Buchholz. Um, the most often cited creator of the term bite is Werner Buch Buchholz, who used the term in 1956 to refer to a grouping of six bits when working on the IBM Stretch supercomputer. Uh, this is not Werner. This is just a guy sitting <laughs> at a console for the IBM Stretch supercomputer. I just really like that picture. Uh, that's a cool looking computer. So I wanted to post a picture of it. So the six-bit byte was a was pretty common in those days. In fact, Braille, the, you know, the language, you know, for blind people reading, was a six-bit encoding of characters for the blind. And many of the early computers from IBM and others used six-bit groupings to encode character data. Six bits, not eight bits per byte, right? That's totally different than what we have today. However, Aha, however, you knew, you knew there had to be a however. Let's talk about Louis Dooley. Around the same time, again, 1956, Louis Dooley first used the word bite, same word, B-Y-T-E, to refer to an undefined grouping of bits, but typically used as four bits. That's right, not eight bits, not six bits, but four four bits. And Dooley published the following letter in a, in a later on issue of, of Byte magazine. Quote, I would like to get the following on record. The word Byte was coined around 1956 to 1957 at MIT Lincoln Laboratories within a project called SAGE, the North American Air Defense System, which was jointly developed by RAND, Lincoln Labs, and IBM. In that era, computer memory structure was already defined in terms of word size. A word consisted of X number of bits. A bit represented a binary notational position in a word. Operations typically operated on all the bits in the full word. We coined the word byte to refer to a logical set of bits that was less than a full word size. So at the time, it was not defined specifically as X bits, but typically referred to as, as a set of four bits. And that was the size of most of our coded data items. Shortly afterward, I went on to other responsibilities that removed me from Sage. After having spent many years in Asia, I returned to the U.S. and was bemused to find out that the word byte was being used in the new microcomputer term technology to refer to the basic addressable memory unit, Louis G. Tooley, uh, Cala, Florida. Cool. That's cool. So, okay. Okay, great. <clears throat> so what the heck is a byte? So this is right. This is true. We, we, we now have two very, very different definitions for the word bite. Both creations of the word happened independently and at almost the exact same moment in time. That's wild, right? We have the Buchholz bite, which is a grouping of six bits, and the Dooley bite, a grouping of an undefined number of bits less than the full word size often used to describe four bits. And you'll note that neither of these definitions from the men who created the terms themselves have the number eight in them, not one. <laughs> now the shift towards eight bits per byte started to happen in the 1970s, at least in any significant way. Before that, there were some eight bit things happening in the supercomputer world, but by and large, we were talking more along the lines of six bits and four bits and those sorts of things. But with the development and the gaining popularity of 8-bit processors, such as the legendary Intel 8008 CPU, things were moving more towards 8 bits per byte. Now, here's the Intel 8008 CPU. What a heck of a cool CPU, and what a weird history of how that happened. By the way, if you go to lunduke.locals.com or go to lunduke.com, there's an article on the history of the 8008 CPU. You got to read that because it is a really wild story. I don't know if a lot of people realize exactly how that CPU came into existence, how the, the weird competition with Texas Instruments and how the Intel didn't even design the instruction set in the CPU. They didn't, they didn't do that. It was done by someone in Texas. It was crazy. Uh, but highly recommend checking that one out. Now, interestingly, back to the story at hand, some of those early 8-bit CPUs had specific functions for handling 4-bit chunks of data. This is true, because up until that point, 4- and 6-bit bytes were incredibly common, including in the predecessor to the 8008 CPU, the 4-bit Intel 4004 CPU, right? Uh, and, and all of those, 
all of those were considered to be bytes. Those, uh, there was a 4-bit byte and a 6-bit byte and an 8-bit byte. Now, fun fact. Nowadays, a 4-bit group is often referred to as a nibble, <laughs> which is an adorable phrase. <laughs> Okay, so for quite some time, the term octet or octad was used to denote 8-bit groups. And at some point along the way, most people phase that out as well, simply referring to all groups of bits uh, as, as a byte, all groups of, of 8 bits as a byte. Though you will still find octet used here and there, especially when talking about various network protocols, all of which means duly invented the modern byte, not Buchholz. Right, duly. Now you go, you go to Google and say who invented the byte. It'll tell you Buchholz, and and that's just straight up wrong. That that's just absolutely incorrect. While many writers, enthusiasts, and computer historians are quick to say that Werner Buchholz coined the term byte, they are obviously, when you look at the actual data, mistaken. Besides the fact that it's hard to discern who, whether it's Dooley or Buchholz, actually used the term first because it was right at the same time. The Buchholz definition is no longer in use at all in modern computing. Not at all. The Buchholz definition is specific. It is six bits. And there's no wiggle room for more or less bits in the Buchholz definition of what a byte is, which modern computing has de de deemed uh, is not uh, six is not the right amount of bits in a modern byte, right? But the Dooley definition, on the other hand, allows for wiggle room, right? Which means that an 8-bit byte would fit the Dooley definition, but not the Buchholz definition. The facts are clear. Lewis G. Dooley created the word byte, at least <laughs> as it has been used for the last 40-plus years or so. But I want to be clear about this. Buchholz, an absolute legend in the computing world, gets one heck of an honorable mention trophy. And it is kind of cool that the two of them, they kind of came up with the same term for the same thing around the same period of time. That's pretty doggone neat. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you want, so, so there you go. You now know who created a byte and exactly what is a byte. Uh, but uh, if you want more fun tech history and you want more myths around the tech history world debunked, go to lunduke.com. You'll find yourself at Lunduke Journal Link Central. It's just a nice, simple page with lots of and lots of links on them. And you scroll past, you get you get a whole bunch of weird, weird breaking news articles and, and in-depth exposés on computer companies and foundations. But you move past that, you get to this chunk called computer history articles. And you get everything on the history of the smiley emoticon, the history of Vim, the, the fact that HTML was not exactly invented by Tim Berners-Lee, and the, the, the history of, of, of long-forgotten operating systems, uh, who really coined the term open source, all sorts of stuff. There is just, there's just a huge number of articles there on a wide variety of computers. If you read all of the history articles published by the Lunduke Journal, just just the ones that are out so far, and there's new ones coming all the time. You will literally be the smartest person at any party when it comes to computer history. And let's be honest, don't you want that? Yeah, you want that. So go ahead over to lunduke.com. All those articles are free to read. Of course, if you want to sign up and subscribe to the Lunduke Journal, it would be appreciated. The work that the Lunduke Journal does is 100% supported by readers, viewers, and listeners just like you. There's no ads here. There's no corporate sponsorship. There's there's nothing. Uh, it's just subscriptions and donations from people like you that keep this afloat. So real independent tech journalism, busting computer history myths, and just general computer fun happiness happening over there at lunduke.locals.com or you can go to lunduke.com and, and get all the links and have a good time about it as well. All right. Now that you know what the fart a bite is, with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes, across the inner tubes, I do declare, end broadcast. <laughs>